and this section is about all people have to face their hidden secrets including the use of money the honesty with money sins motives sex pornography masturbation alcohol hatred and forgiveness the reason why I have this teaching is because um, I've noticed that um, online that there are many pastors who have fallen because of these problems or, or Christians and I myself have uh, witnessed uh, three pastors being caught in adultery three pastors that I know being caught in adultery so uh, it's very important that as Christians we realize that all our life is visible to God and to all people on a day of judgment so we don't think that we can escape the eyes of God okay and all secrets have to be revealed Luke 12 2 okay for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed nor hidden that will not be known therefore whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the lights and what you have spoken in the ear in inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops um, so there is nothing covered that will not be revealed anything covered people cover it up they think that nobody sees it but actually uh, it will be uh, everyone will see it and then nor hidden anything hidden people try to hide it it will be known therefore whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the lights that people speak about this secret in the dark they gossip about people or they uh, accuse people and all this will be revealed in the light and what you have spoken in the ear in inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops that people think that nobody hears them when they talk in secret but then it will be heard on housetops so it's very important that we realize that uh, everything we do has uh, is visible to God right now and will be visible to all people on the day of judgment I have come across pastors uh, who refuse to have their money the use of the money being uh, handled by more than one pastor there was one pastor whom I I tried to help and then I said uh, it's better that the money is uh, given to two pastors and then you two share the uh, accountability together that you watch that the money is used is used properly and this pastor refused all the way refuse all the way to uh, to have two the other pastor uh, to supervise the use of the money and I said this is a general principle this is a general principle that all uh, use of money is better to, to be um, it's better to be supervised by more than one person that there is accountability but this pastor uh, refused to comply and he refused to give me the receipt that he's supposed to use the money for and I have told this pastor I said uh, what you have done you have to face God and you know first your um, ministry could be counted as zero as zero that you have done nothing because because of your your uh, the way you use your money and then secondly it can even affect your salvation but this pastor refused to face it and and I'm very sad to see that and I hope that we all know that there is nothing hidden if any way we use the money that is not supposed to be used you know I asked him how has the money been used he, he refused to tell me now it's not just telling me it's telling God and God knows already so I'm uh, inspired by that I, I say it's very important for us to be aware that everything we do has to be will be visible to all people and is visible to God right now and God knows our heart God knows 
what we're thinking, what we want, why we do certain things. God knows everything. So there's no point hiding from God. And there is no point not having a close relationship with God and obeying God in every way. It's best to obey God in every way and then we'll benefit. And then we'll benefit from His blessings. Okay, and then Jezebel, Revelation 2.23, that Jesus said, I will kill her children with death, and all the children shall know that I am He who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your works. So God searches the minds and hearts. Uh, he knows our heart, our mind, and He will give to each one according to our works. According to what we do, He will reward us, whether we do good or do bad. And then to David, uh, God said, 2 Samuel 12, 12, For you did it secretly, but will do this. I will do this thing before all Israel, before the sun. So God will do all this punishment of Him in front of all Israel. So that's how God will repay people who refuse to face the secret sins. Mark 10, 29 uh, Surely I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the Gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this life, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands, with persecution, and in the age to come eternal life. So all the good things we have done will also be uh, a reveal uh, to God, you know, that God knows everything we do, we, we do. So if we have left our house or brothers or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands that will give this up for God's sake and uh, for the gospel's sake, and we will receive a hundredfold in this life and then but then what we receive are houses brothers and sisters and mothers children and land and wife now what does it mean that we we leave our wife it doesn't mean we have a divorce that means we don't put her in the most important place in our life we put god in the most important place in our life that we don't you know we uh, have mutual submission to the husband and wife and to respect the other person but if the other person tell us to do something that is not godly that we want to not to submit so we are willing to put that down and put God in the first place now it's very important that as pastors you know because there are some pastors who mistreat their wife and then the wife mistreat them and and then they say well my wife is terrible but instead, they should examine themselves and say, did I treat my wife badly? If my, I treat my wife badly, then she will also treat me badly. So I will uh, try to examine myself. Did I treat my wife in the right way? And, but put God in the first place and not let my wife control my life. And then God is happy with that. When we put God in the first place, uh, no matter how good a wife is or how good our children is, are how good our children are or how good our ministry is we still put God in the first place and when we do that God will reward us a hundred times in this life and then give us eternal life so God will see will see our sins as well as what we do for him even a little thing we help people we uh, treat people nicely we bring the gospel to people we love pe people God will be happy with us and will bless us. And I'm very happy to be able to have this live broadcast to do uh, ministry training uh, in Africa. And I will also expand this to other places. And my hope is to bless more pastors and leaders so that they will serve, you will serve God with power and with joy and with peace. And I'm willing to do it. And, and uh, God has given me the teaching and the provision uh, to buy uh, the equipment for the people who need that uh, the equipment and I'm happy to do that and it, it's something that God motivates me to do and it's something God will remember and also what you do for God after you hear this you 
apply to your life, God will be very happy with you and God will reward you. Okay? And then John 3.36 Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life and whoever disobeys the Son will not see life but must endure God's wrath. Now this verse is translated in different ways in different versions. But you know this word here is belief. But this second word here in Greek is not belief. Now it can include belief, but it also includes uh, obey. So he who do, don't believe and don't obey, the son will not see life, but must endure God's wrath. So what it means is that when we believe in Jesus, we don't just believe, but we also obey him. When we obey him, then God is very happy to bless us. That, uh, and then when people disobey God, when they believe and they don't obey God, then they still can face the wrath of God. It's very important for us to realize that when we don't obey God, we can face God's wrath. Okay, John 5.14 See, you have been made well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. Now this is the man uh, who was paralyzed for 38 years and Jesus made him walk again. And then Jesus said to him that do not sin anymore so that nothing worse will happen to you because something worse can happen when we sin. So it's very important that we take care of every sin in our life, every single sin. Uh, if we take care of 90% of our sins and leave some sins behind, it still can give the devil a foothold. So if we, uh, now some people, they, they are very faithful in evangelism, in building up the church, but then they have frustration and anger or they misuse the money or they uh, have uh, too much, you know, a, st a strong relationship with opposite people of the opposite sex in the church that will give the devil a foothold. So we understand that any sin will, uh, will bring something worse to happen to us. John 10.10, 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. So Jesus came to give us life abundantly and the devil comes to steal, kill and destroy. So anytime we have any secret sins, it will give the devil the foothold to come and steal and kill and destroy. And uh, you know, in a whole church, first it's very important the pastor really repents and obey God and follow God. It's very, very important. And that as pastors, we need to repent of all our sins, any secret sins. If we have yelling with the wife or frustration with people, we want to ask God to forgive us and so that we, uh, these sins will not give the devil a foothold or the use of money or how we handle the opposite sex or any kind of sins or unforgiveness uh, or negative thinking and pessimism. All this will give the devil a foothold and he will come in to steal, kill and destroy. Second Samuel 12, 9. This is uh, God talking to David. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife. Verse 10, Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. So God spoke to David and said, Because you have despised my commandment. So by killing Uriah and also taking his wife, therefore the sword shall never depart from your house. So he will suffer this consequence that there will be sword, the sword, the killing in his house. Uh, that it happened that many of his children were killed. So this is uh, the punishment of God on him. So we want to say, Lord, please help us to respect you, to honor you. And you know, to not to be, uh, to be afraid of sins, to turn away from sins and know that sins will destroy our life. Know that 
sins will give the devil a foothold. So we must not let sin control and destroy our life. Why fornication and adultery are so powerful? So here I talk about fornication and adultery. Why it is so powerful? Okay, I see a question here. I can answer. Uh, uh, if all what is spoken in the dark, then does it mean that God forgive and forget our sins when we repent? Now, the question is, what we have spoken in secret will be revealed in the lights. So does it mean God will forgive us? Yes, God will forgive us. Now, this first talk about sins we don't repent. Since we don't repent, that uh, then God will uh, chase after us with the consequence of the sin and He can punish us. And then if a person continues to sin without repentance, he can lose his salvation. Now, even when we repent, we must realize that when we repent, God forgives us, but there is a consequence of sin. Now, what does it mean? There is a consequence of sin. For instance, someone commit adultery or steal some money or, uh, you know, have anger toward people in a church and dislike them and don't forgive them. Now, this will show in a life. Actually, our life is, vis um, <coughs> excuse me, our life is visible to God and to people. People can see our life. If we have frustration, people can see that. If we don't like someone, they can see that. They can see that we don't want to look at them. When we look at them, we might have anger. And God can see that and people can see that. So there will be consequence even when we repent, especially for greater sins. When people commit adultery, even when they repent, God will forgive them. But there will be consequences that we must realize there are consequences of sin when we, um, even when we repent. For instance, if someone mistreats his wife and then he asks God to forgive him, but the relationship with the wife still has to be restored. And sometimes it's very hard to restore if we have hurt a wife many times. It's hard to restore the relationship. And it, it will be a pain in his life. It will be a pain in his life when he has hurt his wife and then his wife uh, mistreats him and then he lives he lives in uh, pain and suffering so we must realize that sins do bring consequences and and when a person sincerely repents of his sin he is forgiven like David he was forgiven but still God will bring the sword to his house so we we must discern the consequence of sin from the forgiveness of sin okay now why fornication and adultery are so powerful. Many people feel lonely. The reason why people commit adultery or fornication because people feel lonely. They want sex to give them satisfaction. They welcome anyone who cares about their feelings and make them feel satisfied. Very often both the man and the woman feel lonely. They find the other person uh, they find that the other person can satisfy their feelings and they are attracted to each other. So very often it's because the man feels lonely, he wants to be comforted, and the woman wants to be comforted. And, uh, and generally in a church, generally there are more women than men. And there are many women who don't find satisfaction in the husbands because many men don't learn to listen to the wife and care about the wife and treat them nicely. So many women are lonely. And the pastor must be very careful not to cross the border. That when we care about women, we do it publicly and also don't overdo it to one woman. And we let the woman follow on the woman individually. We don't want to spend too much time with, with uh, uh, one person. We want to let women follow up on them. Now we, we want to help them, but there's a limit how much we want to help. Now, if the pastor feels lonely because he feels pressure, he feels, you know, even his wife maybe is not happy with him because he spends too much time in the church. Uh, he's too, uh, he doesn't listen to the wife and, 
and uh, and he won't want to boss around in the house. So the wife doesn't like him if he doesn't build up his family. And then he sees this woman and helps the woman. And the woman is very happy that this pastor, who is so important, would pay attention to her and help her. And then she is very comforted. And then she likes to see the pastor. And then the pastor feels comforted when this woman needs him. And so he finds it a pleasure to minister to this woman. And this will open up to a foothold to the devil. And then gradually, if there is a dependence on the person, what does it mean the dependence on the person? When this pastor wants to see the woman, Every time he goes to church, he likes to see that woman. And when he doesn't see her, he will think about her. Then there is a dependence on the woman. Or if the woman doesn't see the pastor, she feels lost. She wants to see the, the, the pastor. She wants the pastor to pray for her every time. Uh, so then there is a dependence on each other. When there is a dependence, there is already a danger. And this will give the devil a foothold. And the next step would be, they say things like, oh, I like how you talk, I like how you look, I like what you did to me. You know, when the moment they start to talk like that, it's another step. That ex is expression of, of delight in their person. That I'm happy with you, I like you. That is another danger. And then gradually, this will build up to be, you know, having... Uh, uh, a delight in a person and some people say I don't have sex with her I just like her now that is still a sin the reason is that opens up the uh, a, a foothold to the devil and it gives the devil a foothold and also it would cause the woman to stumble because when the moment when the pastor says I'm so happy to see you I'm so happy to see your smile then the woman feels attracted to the pastor. And this will open, you know, make the woman feel so satisfied with the pastor. And it's a personal satisfaction, not a satisfaction of the ministry. And so this will open up uh, a, a way to, uh, to temptation. And then if the pastor touches the woman, you know, and hugs the woman, and then it will open up the way to adultery. So it's, so we must understand that it goes from one step to another step, one thing to another thing. That it starts with the lack of satisfaction in our marriage. So we, we need to really work on a marriage and, and appreciate our spouse and say, God, thank you for giving my spouse. But many people say, I cannot appreciate my spouse because she mistreats me. Then we want to examine ourselves. Did we retreat? mistreat her so we want to be nice to her and and say sorry to her that i mistreated you please forgive me i want to love you i want to have a good relationship with you shall we build up a good relationship that way we have no foothold to the devil and then we can enjoy each other we can enjoy ministry together and then uh, of course the woman need to learn to respect the husband and not to criticize him and not to make him give him pressure but to give him support and appreciation. Thank you for the effort. Thank you for everything you do. Then they don't give the devil a foothold. So we understand that fornication and adultery are very powerful because of the loneliness of the people and people need comfort. People need companion. And when we need companion, we look for someone of the same sex, not, not uh, uh, someone of the opposite sex. Now, of course, we want to, you know, don't want homosexuality you know that I don't mean homosexuality but I mean a you know relationship of a godly relationship of support and prayer and uh, serving God together and encouraging one another that kind of relationship healthy relationship and also we can have a group support for instance if the pastor is nice to everyone and encourage the people to be nice to each other then we feel very supported in the group. So the people feel supported when the pastor talks to them. And then the, the pastor feels supported when the people uh, 
are supportive of him. So this is a mutual supportive relationship and mutual supportive ministry. So we, this way, we'll enjoy the ministry. We, uh, even when we have to confront people, we'll say, you are important. You are important in the sight of God. God has a wonderful plan in your life. And when you love God and obey God, God will bless your life. So this is how we guide people to grow, not to rebuke. Now, sometimes we need to rebuild when people continue to uh, not to repent. But if they repent, we want to guide them with the grace of God. God loves you. God has a wonderful plan in your life. And if you follow God, God is pleased with you and will bless you. So we want to motivate people with God's grace. And the Bible is like that. God is like that. God draws us with His love. And then people are satisfied. So we want to... Uh, enjoy relationship. We want to be nice to people so that we enjoy the family, we enjoy the church, we enjoy ministry, we enjoy preaching. Like for now, for me now, I enjoy preaching. Uh, I enjoy going to Africa when I came to you and I enjoy doing ministry here now and I enjoy it because I know that God is happy with what I do. Not that I'm better than anyone. I'm just saying when I do God's ministry in God's way, God is very happy, so I enjoy it. Okay, and then uh, when the two persons are lonely and they need comfort, the more they talk and comfort each other, the more they are attracted. Very often the marriages don't satisfy them, and so they, they want to get some uh, other attraction and satisfaction. First, they have mental adultery. Later, they could have physical adultery. So we start with mental adultery. It can destroy the marriage, the reputation, ministry, and church. Everything can be destroyed. It can destroy the marriage and the reputation of the pastor and his ministry, and the church can split up or, or, or break down totally. So we realize that this is very destructive. Okay, and then the destructiveness of different sins. The more a person thinks about sex, the more he is controlled by it. The more he is controlled by lust, the more he will sin. And, uh, and, more his life, uh, uh, and then more of his life will be destroyed by Satan. So, when a person thinks about sex much, the more he will be controlled by this lust. And the more when he is controlled by lust, then the more he will sin. And then the more of his life will be destroyed by Satan. So when a person think about sex much, then he's controlled by lust. And he'll sin more. And then more he'll give more footholds to the devil. And then more destruction from Satan. So these are consequences when he start with thinking about sex much. So we need to turn our hearts to God. Think of God. God, you are lovely. You know, for sex is something like this. The more we think about sex, the more we need sex. The more we think about God, the less we'll think about sex. And the less we'll need sex. And then we, you know, have sex only in a marriage. But even in marriage, it doesn't mean a man will think about the sex every day. But he will think about God. Then his mind is on God and on blessing people. If his mind, even when he's married, if his mind is always on sex, then he's always thinking about sex. And then when he sees some other woman who is very attractive, then he can be attracted by that woman. Okay, and then when a person thinks much about money, then he's tempted by money and he can become dishonest about money. He can, he can start with, oh, I just need some money. I'll just take some money from the offering now and uh, I'll, I'll pay, put it back. And then later he said, I, I cannot put it back and uh, I'll just take it and uh, I serve God anyway. So I, it's right for me to take some money. Now it's wrong because the money has to be approved by the church, not taken secretly. It has to be approved by the church. And if the church has not approved that money, then he cannot take the money. And if we do that, it's stealing from God's money is very serious. And a person can lose his salvation. So we must be sorry for our sins and hate the sins. And then if we dislike someone, then we become more critical of him. And then we have bad attitude and bad action. And then relationship become worse. And then Satan attacks. So it, it 
goes from one step to another. When we dislike someone, then when we see that person will dislike him and will be more critical of him and criticize him more and will have bad attitude toward the person and then bad action that we do something not uh, nice to him. And then the relationship will become worse. And then Satan will attack the relationship. Uh, not only will attack the person being attacked, but also attack the person who dislike the other person. So both person will be affected. And then different levels of destruction. So bad relationship with God, the result is little spiritual strength. And then less joy and compassion. And then bad relationship with people. And then lose trust of people and ruin marriage, ruin ministry, ruin reputation, ruin church and split the church. And legal problems are punished by God. So it can lead to different things. So when a person has bad relationship with God, that's the root of all problems. If a person has good relationship with God, then he doesn't want to sin. Now, but even when after a person prays, he can still sin because we need to have this continual prayer and alertness to keep us from sin. You know, for instance, someone can be leading a prayer and very, you know, powerful and then a woman comes up to him and say, Wow, your I like your prayer. You're so powerful. And then he's attracted to her. And then, so we can be uh, tempted in any situation, even after we pray. So we have to be very careful. And then, if he has bad relationship with God, then there is little spiritual strength. And then we'll have less joy and less compassion for people. And then he, it will affect relationship with people. So first, it affects his inner life. Inner life, less spiritual strength and less joy and compassion. And then relationship with people will be affected. And then lose trust of people because people don't trust him anymore. And then ruin the marriage and ministry. Uh, so it affects the ministry. And then the reputation. And then the church. And split the church. And then also can lead to legal problems if a person uh, breaks the law. And then he can be punished by God for anything he has, any of these things he has done. So we see that any sins have destructiveness. So we don't want to let sin control us. Okay, and then we can handle any kind of sins with the five step to victory. And I hope you remember this five step to victory. The first is aware. That we are aware of our sins or anything that affects our life, any negative thinking, any negative feelings, any uh, negative thinking toward people. And then two, believe that any sin or negative things are destructive, it's destructive. And then apply biblical principle. What does the Bible tell me to do? The Bible tells me to bless those who curse us, to love our enemies, to be nice to people and to be honest and sincere. Four, pray to have forgiveness and strength. So please, God, help me, forgive me, and give me strength. And then choose to obey God. So when we see, you know, do we have lust or any kind of sin, sinful thoughts in our heart, anything secret that we want to uh, repent and overcome the sins by stopping, we can overcome the sins by stopping the sinful thoughts before they become action. So it's very important to stop the sinful thoughts right before they become action, when we are thinking about the sins. Okay, so how to stop lust, masturbation, fornication? How do we stop this? First, trust that God loves us very much and we are very precious. Obedience will build up our lives and sins will destroy our lives, will treasure our lives. So we, first we believe that God loves us very much and our lives are very precious. And when we obey God, God will bless our life. And if we sin, it will destroy our life. So we treasure, treasure our life. Our life is precious. I don't want to let sin control my life. I don't want to let lust and uh, any, any kind of uh, sinful thought to affect me. Two, when we have a close relationship with God and learn to enjoy God and everything God has given us, the satisfaction with God will cleanse us from lust. So we learn to enjoy God when we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I love you. 
And then when we open our heart, gradually we can sense His joy and His love and His peace and His, his freedom. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. So we learn to enjoy God. Now, for people who are single, we don't want to have any sexual activity and no masturbation because it, it will lead to, you know, this is not something God likes, likes and it will also lead to uh, fornication. So we want to have this close relationship that we enjoy God. Lord, Lord Jesus, we enjoy you. We like you. We love you. And then build up a loving relationship with the spouse and the satisfaction will reduce the lust. So build up healthy relationship with the spouse and with people that we make friends with people, we care about people, then we're not affected by lust or sins that much. When we build up our ministry in God's way, we will enjoy our ministry and this satisfaction will keep us from lust. Believe that a holy life is essential to a powerful ministry. So when we build our ministry in God's way, that we enjoy God, enjoy serving God, enjoy blessing people, when we enjoy helping people, then we have satisfaction in our ministry and satisfaction from God and it will reduce our uh, thinking about sex, about lust. And then also believe that a holy life is essential to powerful ministry. If we want a powerful ministry, we want to live a holy life. But there are many people who are successful ministry and then they start to look for women in the ministry. They start to have problems in the marriage. So that's something we need to handle. Uh, we have seen some powerful evangelists and then when they become very powerful and then they have problems in the marriage and, they, and then they have extramarital relationship and it destroys their ministry, destroy their life. And this is how Satan attacked many people. Okay. So, and then build up healthy same-sex friendship and healthy relationship with different people. So have same-sex uh, friendship but not homosexual relationship, but healthy same-sex friendship. Now it's, uh, you know, more and more people can have uh, homosexuality of two male and even two females. It's sometimes easy to have homosexual relationship because they, you know, they uh, the, uh, the other woman can understand the feeling more and it's more comforting to them and then so they get satisfaction from that. So we have to be very careful that, uh, that we don't go into homosexual love. Now even when two persons same, of the same sex, they depend on each other. They don't have homosexual sex act. They just have the attraction to each other. They, really want to see each other. They want to hug each other and kiss each other and have intimate body contact. They already are committing sins. And when they depend on each other too much, that already, it, op it opens up the way to homosexuality. So I encourage people to have relationship with more people. Now we have, we can have healthy same-sex relationship. Uh, we don't have to have homosexual relationship. We can have same-sex relationship that is healthy, that is not over depend doesn't have over-dependence on the other person. Okay, and whenever we face temptation, we remind ourselves that sinning will take away our close relationship with God. So we run away from the temptation. So like uh, Joseph, when he was tempted by his mistress, he ran out. Now even though he was accused by his mistress, but God protected him and later he became the, the minister of, uh, of Egypt because he was faithful and God has a wonderful plan in his life. So when we face temptation, we remind ourselves that sins will destroy our life, our relationship with God and destroy everything we have. Sins will destroy everything and we'll lose everything. And then avoid pornography on the cell phone or computer. Stop lustful thoughts whenever they appear. Because nowadays many merchants use pornography to attract people. They will send it to your cell phone and it, and or people search on a cell phone and then, and then they uh, come up with this temptation. And this will open up the way to destroy the life. The whole life will be destroyed. And so don't think that 
you know, a momentary satisfaction in pornography uh, it, uh, that it's not too destructive. It can be very, very destructive. So I hope that we all avoid if any, any pornography shows up on our cell phone, we want to delete it. We want to say no to people. There are some people on the on a uh, cell phone, uh, they will send messages to us and say, I want to see you, I want to have sex with you. We want to turn away from those people. And uh, whenever we have sexual impulse, we calm ourselves by prayer, praise, exercise, talking with someone of the same sex. We applaud ourselves when we can calm our sexual impulse. So when people have sexual impulse, it's important that he will, you know, uh, do different things to calm himself down by prayer, by praise, praising God and talking to someone of the same sex and, and applaud ourselves when we can calm our sexual impulse. That we, now many, many Christians fall in this area because they, they just cannot handle it and they just let it control. You know, the more they think about it, the more it will control it. So we want to say this is opening up to temptation and to attack by Satan. And I want my life to be used by God. If we want a strong anointing of God, we cannot have pornography or masturbation. God is not happy with that and God will not bless our life. So if we want to have a strong presence of God and God is pleased with us, that we want to follow God and obey God and love God and then God is happy with our whole life. How to stop less masturbation? Nine have healthy exercise to reduce the lust. When we have heavy exercise, healthy exercise, it will take away our energy. And then number 10, when God prepares a spouse for us, build up a healthy marriage, it can avoid, building up the healthy marriage can avoid the temptation of adultery. Not loving and respecting one spouse can lead to adultery. So we want to respect our spouse and treasure our spouse and be nice to her and then it will keep ourselves you know, in a healthy relationship and it will take away temptation. And as women too, women don't reject your husband when he requests to have sexual act with you because our body belongs to each other. So even when there is some problem in the relationship, don't reject the sexual act. If you reject the sexual act, then he can go to have sexual act somewhere or he might have masturbation. So it's better that the, uh, the wife would submit to the husband in this and then we want to build up the relationship. So many sins come from a bad marriage relationship. Okay, When someone is already in some secret sins, okay? Now so if you see this message or when you preach this message, you also want to say this, if someone in a congregation or ourselves are in some kind of secret sins, what can we do? Believe that the secret sins cause God to be angry and they can destroy our lives. So first believe that these sins are destructive. God is not happy with us and we will not be blessed greatly by God. And God can discipline us and punish us. So we want to say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. I know that these are destructive. Two, repent and hate the sin because sins can destroy our whole lives and future. Now it's very important to hate the sin. To say, I hate adultery, I hate fornication, I hate pornography, I hate lust, because this would destroy my life. And I want to have God, you know, Jesus did not masturbate. Jesus did not have any sexual act. And he was young when he was crucified. But his relationship with God, his satisfaction with, the, with God doesn't uh, bring him lust that he does not have lust. So we want to repent and hate our sins. And three, hating the sins will give us strength to stop and turn away from the sins. So it's very important when we realize certain sins affect us, we want to hate that sin. And ask for help from a counselor or a pastor. So if we have this problem, we ask a pastor or a counselor to help us. Uh, don't face it alone. Ask someone to help us. Ask someone mature. When we still have repentance and a desire to be forgiven, the Holy Spirit has not left us. Because some people say, oh, the Holy Spirit has left me because I have this lust. I have, a commit, I have committed adultery, so God has left us. 
when we still repent of our sin and want to be forgiven, then the Holy Spirit has not left us. It doesn't mean we can continue to sin. If we continue to sin, we'll go down more and more, and we can our whole life can be destroyed. So the fact that the Holy Spirit has not left us doesn't mean we can continue to sin. We want to say no to sin as soon as possible before it destroys our whole life. When we turn away from our sins, we can help people with similar problems. So when we uh, face, uh, have overcome our sins, then we say, thank God for that, and then we can help people with similar problems. Okay? Um, now, if you have any questions, you can send to me. This is a very important topic because um, uh, it, I'm sure that in any congregation, there must be some people who are affected by some kind of secret sins affected by lust that they are constantly for instance some guys may be looking at all the girls in the church and think about having sex with them or chasing after them and there are sometimes guys who go to church in order to chase after girls and then there are girls who want to get married soon who want to find a husband and and there are married married people who look at other people and then they they say, I, I wish I had married this person uh, because my wife doesn't like me. Now, sometimes the husband says, my wife doesn't like me, but if I have married this other woman, she's so nice to me. And I want to say, any woman will not, will not like a man if he doesn't listen to her and doesn't care about her. Sooner or later, the woman will get turned off. So sometimes a man mistreats his wife or doesn't listen to the wife and it's not nice to the wife and he thinks if I marry another woman it will solve the problem actually it's not the problem with this first woman it's that any woman we have after we get married the woman wants love because woman can give love to the husband and children usually children say the the mother really cares about them and they really like uh, the love of the mother. They can see the love of the mother much more because God has given women this uh, strong uh, motivation to love. And so when women loves, they also, they also want to be loved. They need love. Everyone needs love, but women need love more than men. Men can you know, sometimes if, even if, uh, you know, they don't need the wife to tell him, I love you, I love you. But a woman like the husband to say, I love you, I love you. So any man marry any woman must give love to her and care about her and listen to her, care about her feelings and be ni nice to her and kind to her. And then she'll be satisfied and then... Uh, and then they will enjoy the marriage and both will, will put in effort and really really uh, uh, enjoy the relationship we need to learn to enjoy ourselves enjoy God and enjoy people we enjoy being ourselves thank God I'm me thank God God has loved me I'm important I can serve God I can bless people and thank God I have God God loves me God cares about me and thank God I, he has given me the wife or some friends I like them because they are nice to me I thank God for these people so we enjoy we enjoy anything we enjoy eating we enjoy doing things and then when we enjoy things then we enjoy God and people and us then we enjoy life much more and then we can enjoy the spouse now people who don't enjoy themselves cannot love their spouse some people they they have a mentality of suffering. They, they're suffering. Every, they just think of work. I have, to work. I have to work to earn money. I have to work to keep my family uh, fed. But even when we work, we can enjoy. You know, when, even when we work, we can say, Thank God, hallelujah, and when we're working. Uh, especially if we do simple work, like when we're washing dishes, when we're cooking, we can say, Thank you, Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Now, even when I'm preparing my messages, I'm thanking God, I'm thinking of God, and I'm listening to Christian music, and I enjoy God. So, we learn to enjoy God and enjoy people. Then we can enjoy the, uh, the marriage, and then there will be more satisfaction in the marriage. 
if we cannot enjoy ourselves then we cannot enjoy life and then people who cannot enjoy life they feel bitter they feel unhappy and then they all have openings for the devil to attack them mm -hmm.